can say that if somebody is a college grad and they are having zero year experience, then also they get the same position of software engineer 2, which is L3. Technically, in broader terms, L3 is software engineer 1 or a fresh grad software engineer, right? Which in company like Google, we call it as software engineer 3. But in a broader term, in overall general industry aspect, this is technically software engineer 2 or mid-level software engineer. Now here, what you are going to do, you are going to technically own a project. For example, you are going to be the one who is going to, let's say, design everything around the transaction history part. Now, this is a complete project, right? You might feel that, okay, this is very simple, but how exactly the architecture of the transaction history is going to work? Because once the transactions are made, your team will be technically responsible to store the transaction in a certain way. You will be responsible for doing the API designs. What all transaction probably you need to cache because the latest transaction might be very frequently viewed. So you might need to cache, cache that as well. You, but you are going to own this complete project or complete product. For example, the complete project could be that apart from uh, the transactions happening on let's say UPI, everything else, let's say the transaction history, checking the balance, checking the credit score, right, doing the registration on the UPI, maybe a couple of different, different, um, I would say projects come under you, right. So you are going to have a small team and you are going to be the team lead. A lot of time this L5 role is also considered very consistent with the team lead. It's not a direct engineering manager role, but it's a team lead role. So you are going to have a team level impact. You have to actually show kind of like leadership skills and the scope of your work is going to be very wide. If you're starting a career in software engineering, it becomes extremely important to actually understand that what are the things that are going to be coming up ahead. Like for example, when you start, as a software engineer, what are the things that is expected out of you as a fresh grad software engineer? And as you progress in the career, how the engineering ladder actually looks like? Like how after the first or the second promotion, how exactly your responsibilities and roles are going to change? And in this particular video, I'm going to explain that. And interestingly, I'm going to take a product driven approach that maybe we can take a small example. And we will see that at each level, what are the things different levels of software engineers actually care about? Something like UPI is something which everybody um, in India at least has most probably watched or like or maybe used. So we are going to take an example of something like a payment system or a UPI like payment system, right? And I'll give you example that, okay, if you are, let's say, a uh, fresh grad and then slowly, steadily you progress in your career, what are the things you are going to actually do? How exactly your roles and responsibility going to change? So without any further ado, let's just start the video. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please, please, please do consider subscribing to the channel because this is going to help us a lot, gives us a lot of motivation to put some really interesting content around tech and career. So let's just start. Before moving forward, I would like to tell you about our brand new offering at AlgoCamp around the advanced Spring Boot backend development cohort. So we were getting a lot of requests to actually launch our next iteration of the Spring Boot cohort and here we are. This one is far more bigger and better than the last one and trust me, if you are somebody who is looking to start their journey in the world of Spring Boot in the backend ecosystem, or maybe you already know some things about backend development, maybe in Spring Boot or maybe in some other tech stack, this is going to be a one-stop solution for you. We are going to talk about everything from the absolute beginner level to the advanced level in Spring Boot. We are going to talk about how exactly you can set up your backend ecosystem and backend projects in Spring Boot. We are going to take a microservice-driven architecture and build different, different projects, including an Uber app, including Airbnb app, payment wallet like Paytm wallet app and many more. We are going to talk about how exactly microservices can actually communicate with each other in synchronous and asynchronous fashion. We are going to see a lot of interesting microservices pattern like CQRS pattern, Saga pattern for distributed transaction, how you can implement Saga pattern through orchestration and choreography, how Saga pattern is going to help you with respect to the implementation if you compare that with two-phase commit, how you can implement each one of them, what is the outbox pattern, how exactly event sourcing is going to work, how you can integrate Kafka for your event sourcing and whatnot. We are going to see so many many interesting database concepts like how exactly no SQLs are internally implemented using LSM trees, what are write ahead logs, how you can replicate your databases, how you can shard your databases, how you can design a good database schema and whatnot. All the topics that we are going to cover must be listed in front of you on the screen here. What I can say is that this course is going to be one stop solution to become an advanced backend engineer in Spring Boot. This is definitely going to demand some good time commitment from all the students who are interested but trust me this is going to be one hell of a ride. So what are you waiting for? 
do check out the link in the description section below and read the complete end to end syllabus of what we are going to cover in the spring boot cohort you can actually use the coupon spring 2025 to get maximum possible discount on the course and i'm really excited to see you guys in the cohort right do check out the link description section below and let's get back to the video so just for a context in this complete video i'm going to keep the leveling and the name of the leveling very consistent to what facebook or you can say meta or maybe something like google uber these kind of companies take so in companies like google uber meta the new grad or let's say the fresher software engineer level is called as l3 or e3 right in google this l3 level or the fresher software engineer level is also called as software engineer 2 a lot of people get confused that okay this is kind of like a higher or a promoted level that's not the case you can say that if somebody is a college grad and they are having zero year experience then also they get the same position of software engineer 2 which is l3 technically in broader terms l3 is software engineer 1 or a fresh grad software engineer right so if you are somebody who is zero year experience one year experience and sometime two year experience as well then most probably when you are going to get hired you are going to get this particular role now because it's a fresh grad role and i would say uh, sometimes it is also called as early stage software engineer role then the expectations are according to that you are not expected to be super um, i would say great in architecting the software instead the most important thing at this particular level is the delivery of the code the more coding you actually do the more impact you will be able to generate your impact is going to be technically directly related to the amount of features that you are going to technically develop you are expected to do the final hardcore coding right most of the time like when you are going to like eventually start there is a good chance that you are not going to be one who is going to decide the architecture the architectures are going to be decided by let's say the higher level software engineers you will be given some part of that particular project right so you might be owning a feature not a project so let's take an example let's say with respect to uh, something like a payment system or like a upi so let's say you are in the upi team right so and let's say you are a full stack engineer so now if let's say there is a company who is building the complete upi app so at your level most probably you might be working on one particular small feature that is let's say if somebody uh, like inside the application you want to ha have an option so that people can see the transaction history now this is one single feature this is a mandatory feature that it needs to be there so maybe you are going to work on the back end api of how exactly the transaction history is going to be fetched from the existing transactions right now there might be some other people who have already made the project and the coding effort for completing a transaction you are going to solely own this feature and your impact is going to be to deliver this feature to deploy this feature and see what's the impact of this feature whether the users are able to see this feature or not you have you will be expected to integrate monitoring observability so that nothing goes sideways and what not so this is going to be slightly very closely related to you and once you grow in this particular lore eventually when you are about to get promoted people will start expecting you to also do software designs right let's say you are about to be promoted or let's say you are targeting a promotion then at that point of time you will be expected to have some knowledge of software design as well or architecture design as well because generally in company this happens that let's say if you are working at the l3 level and you want to get promoted to l4 level or let's say you are giving interviews for an l4 level then you need to demonstrate that you were already working as an l4 you were getting the salary of l3 but you were working as an l4 then only you will get promoted or probably you will get uh, l4 level shift altogether so this is something very important so for l4s i'll talk about it later but software design is something that becomes very crucial part of them so this this aspect for l3 engineers do come at the later stage of their early level software engineering career at l3 now the next level is technically the l4 or the e4 level which in company like google we call it as software engineer 3 but in a broader term in overall general industry aspect this is technically software engineer 2 or mid level software engineer now here what you are going to do you are going to technically own a project for example you are going to be the one who is going to let's say design everything around the transaction history part now this is a complete project right you might feel that okay this is very simple but how exactly the architecture of the transaction history is going to work because once the transactions are made your team will be technically responsible to store the transaction in a certain way you will be responsible for doing the api designs what all transaction probably you need to cache because the latest transaction might be very frequently viewed so you might need to cache cache that as well 
how exactly the front end is going to be optimized, how exactly back end is going to be connected. The complete end to end architecture design is going to be something that is going to be done by you. You will be responsible for writing design documentation, design docs, high level design, low level design, and you will be technically owning a project, which this will be uh, a kind of like part of a bigger product, but you are going to technically own a project, right? And this ownership is something that is going to be a very crucial part of your level. Plus, apart from this, you are also going to be actively coding as well. So inside this project, a couple of features will be developed by, let's say, some L3s. And you are also going to be responsible for developing a lot of features altogether. Apart from that, code reviews, code cleanliness, code maintainability, making sure that there are no tech debts, right? Having a regular review cycle. This is also something that is going to be important for you. There's a good chance that, let's say, if you have a weekly scrum or daily scrum, you are going to, let's say, put down uh, all the updates from your particular pod or your team, right? So it's going to be like when you are going to be in your early stage of L4, then you are going to work on a, lot, on a lot of design aspect. You are expected to deliver design documentation and then eventually complete and complete the delivery of the feature. And later when you're going to, let's say, go to a seniority role, like, let's say when you will start targeting L5, then your leadership skills also start coming up that whether you were able to lead a team altogether or not, and whether you were able to lead the feature end to end or not. Now, L5 or E5 is the senior software engineer role, right? This is generally for people who have six to seven years of experience or more, right? Uh, this is also uh, like in broader terms, a lot of people also call it as SD4 or something. Again, different, different companies have different, different nomenclature. But this L5 or E5 role is for senior software engineers. Now, this is going to be something where you are going to technically kind of like own a product. You will be having a lot of different, different uh, parts in your product that you are going to own as a team lead. Again, you will be responsible for coding a lot of that as well, right? You, but you are going to own this complete project or complete product. For example, the complete project could be that apart from uh, the transactions happening on, let's say, UPI, everything else, let's say the transaction history, checking the balance, checking the credit score, right, doing the registration on the UPI, maybe a couple of different, different, um, I would say projects come under you, right? So you are going to have a small team and you're going to be the team lead. A lot of time this L5 role is also considered very consistent with the team lead. It's not a direct engineering manager role, but it's a team lead role. So you are going to have a team level impact. You have to actually show kind of like leadership skills and the scope of your work is going to be very wide. You are going to be responsible to very consistently sit with product managers and decide what all features you are going to deliver at what point of time, right? And you are going to decide the bandwidth, which particular team member of uh, your team, like which L3, which L4 is going to work on which particular project. If let's say you need some bandwidth from some other project people, you are going to bring in that. All of this is going to be very important. And this is kind of like a very significant level in the career, right? A lot of people at L5 role uh, make very big, I would say, project level impact in the companies. And the pay grade is also very significantly high. So when you are, let's say, um, starting your L5 role, you already should be demonstrating your leadership skills also. And it is expected that you are technically very sound. You know architecture design, you know, if let's say you, have, you are in the company for a long period of time, you know the company tech stack on which your product is being built very well. This is going to be something that is a very important level in the software engineering career. Now, after L5, there are levels like L6, which is staff software engineer or E6 role. Then you have L7, which is principal uh, engineer and beyond. So these are very senior levels, right? And you can compare that and L6 is mostly like a uh, like soft staff software engineer and parallel to that, like there is a parallel ladder of engineering manager as well. People can actually decide, like generally most of the companies give you a decision that do you want to continue as an IC as an engineer or you want to also take core engineering manager level responsibilities. When you become an engineering manager, your responsibility is also going to be ensuring that the careers of L3, L4 and L5 is also progressing, promotions, how exactly the salaries and everything is going to be uh, distributed. A lot of these kind of things, the management roles start coming to the picture. But if you see on parallel, an E6 or an L6 staff software engineer is going to be something that is going to have a product level impact. You do not going to have a project. There's a good chance that you are going to have a complete UPI, like you have a complete UPI product and in, uh, under you, there is another uh, L6 engineer who is actually looking at, let's say, the bill payments on the application altogether and so on. And there can be multiple L6 who are actually, who have actually distributed the product. But whatever you actually do, it will be having, let's say, a 
cross team impact right you will be having multiple teams that you are going to work with and it is going to be a cross team impact a lot of revenue impacting features and revenue impacting um, i would say things are going to be there generally what i have seen is that people at l6 do not have a lot of things to code because the coding effort is generally driven by l3 l4 and l5s but at l6 trust me on this i have seen people who have like one who, who are into the system let's say for three weeks and they already know the complete product or at least 70 percent of it they have to ramp up their learning on the product very very fast because the products can be very diverse the the teams who own them the tech stack the actual implementation the intricacies this can be very diverse there can be so many stakeholders to actually deal with so their expectation is that they ramp up on the product and the project very very fast and then they actually drive the results they actually drive the incoming features what exactly is going to happen in the quarters what is going to be happening in the next h1 like half of the year and the next half of the year and so on a lot of project planning a lot of architect like core architecture design for example if you see l4 and l5 they are going to actually do the design of let's say features in a project but overall the products high level design the broader high level design is going to be driven actually by your l6 and a lot of um, let's say approvals for let's say some crucial database changes for some crucial architectural changes is generally done by l6 software staff software engineers and then beyond this there are principal software engineers principal software engineer again has org level impact right you might be having multiple principal software engineers across your payments org right then there might be an ads org there might be let's say um, um, 365 kind of like an org and so on so principal engineers are one more level up they have organization level impact they are going to actually see what um, kind of um, autonomous uh, things can be driven by which particular team right how exactly the team leadership should actually go forward uh, some very crucial technical design need to be approved by the principal software engineers and these are the people who know the systems in out I have seen like I have worked with a few principal software engineers who like actually knows that which particular file and probably which uh, particular function exists where what is the use case of that particular function because they have seen the product grow so well right these are generally very early stage engineers in the team who have like started the build from uh, building the project from the scratch and then taken up it to the next level so this is a very very senior role and very less people are there in the this particular role you will find most of the people on the l3 l4 and l5 roles and slowly and steadily on these higher levels the salary band also increases very very uh, drastically and the number of people being hired is also very very less so these were I would say the majority of the software engineering levels right most of the time when you join a company there is going to be a dedicated guide on sometimes company specific that what is expected out of your role if you see there are some companies which follow these role levels only but have some of their own distinguishment like for example in American Express uh, the level naming is different in Microsoft at each level like L3 they have distributed the L3 level into two parts L59 and L60 then L4 level also into two parts L61 L62 then L5 level also into two parts L uh, um, 63 L 64 and so on so they have like even smaller bands but overall the leveling remains the same so I hope this video gave you an idea that what you can actually expect eventually when you join a company as a software engineer if you like this particular video do then do share it with your friends and don't forget to like this video uh, comment your thoughts if you have any questions I would be happy to answer them and if you enjoyed this video do consider subscribing to the channel if you have watched the video till the end I really believe that you are enjoying our videos and do show your support by subscribing to the channel that being said let's wrap this particular video here we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos till then take care bye bye I'm Sanket Singh signing off